All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you would download your data on Strava and how you would use the Flink app to download your data or view statistics there. So anyways, to download your data, it's kind of rudimentary on Strava. You go to settings, my account, and down at the bottom, it gives you a download or delete your account. So I definitely don't wanna download it. So you click get started and then you request your archive. I've already done this, so it ends up saying I can't request it anymore. You can only request once per week. But anyways, you request your archive and it sends you an email link where you download a giant XML file, which is not very easily readable by a lot of programming languages. It's, it's not nearly as universal as, say, a CSV. That's where Flink comes in. So I've already downloaded my activities here. You go to flink.run go to this website and you link your Strava account to it. It goes through Strava and downloads your account. And then it gives you some stats of its own. So here we go, my trend. Um, it even tells me, I didn't even see this. It tells me I'm trending up in moving time and distance, but down in pace, so I'm getting a little slower. Um, gives you some statistics of all sorts of things, distance, pace, moving time. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It tells you your furthest. My furthest is actually 31 miles. I don't know why it's not on there. But anyways, um, and then it tells you how many activities you do, but that real, real party piece here is you can download your data as an Excel file or a CSV. Now, I think CSV is superior here. Um, it's kind of the universal file type, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that now. So anyways, here we are. This is the CSV file that it gave us. So I've already scrolled a ways down there. This is all of my data since 2014. So it gives you the ID number, start date, name, distance, amount of time moving. This is in seconds. I was confused about this for a bit. The type of activity. And then if you have data such as heart rate, it gives you those. It gives you your speed, cadence, elevation, where you started, where you ended, weather, temperature, and weather icon. It's kind of cool that it gives you weather. I actually had not noticed that. That's really nifty. It must connect it to a weather service. But anyways, it gives you this, a CSV file. So this is very easily readable into another programming, prim, programming language. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I analyze this in Python. Hello, so now we're on to the data analysis portion of this video. And I think this, for me at least, is the party piece here because it allows me to individual to, to kind of customize how I'm going to see my data. So let's see, first you want to import your modules. So what do these do? OS, at least to me, is just a tool to efficiently move throughout your um, computer and, and uh, do file management and choose what file you're in. I don't use it too much. Pandas, very important language. It's a, it's kind of a data, it's not really a language, it's a module. It's, it's a very important data science module. It's very efficient at managing data, uh, and it's very good to use when you're doing analysis. I like Seaborn because it very simply creates beautiful plots. It's a very good way to visualize your data in a very pretty way, very quickly. And then there's SciPy, which I might use in a later video, uh, but I think it's relevant here to keep in your back pocket because SciPy is very useful for quickly getting statistics about data you've analyzed with pandas. That's what I use it for at least. So we're gonna go ahead and start here with uh, OS. So we're gonna wanna change to the directory that we want to work in. So for me, my data is here and that's also where I'm saving my code. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that line. And then I wanna load in the data. So I've named my file that I downloaded from Flink, tyostrava.csv. So I'm going to do that, and here you go. I don't know if you can see this on the view, but it pops up up at the top. So if you double click on it, it shows you that it has loaded in everything. So if it's white, it's not viewing it as a number. If it's red or purple or whatever, it's viewing it as a number. So that's nice. Um, so what if I wanted to view my distance by month with the box and whiskers plot I'm using? So here's DFR, DF run. Um, so what I've done with this is I'm saying dfr, which I'm saying is my running data, is equal to data frame when the data frame type, remember, uh, if you go to your data frame here, type is the variable 
that tells you whether it's a ride, a run, swim, workout, whatever, when df run type is equal to run. And you have to have it in brackets here because it's a string. It's, it's like a word, it's not a number. Um, and then I want to convert the df time, df run start date into time. So I want pandas to recognize, or Python to recognize it's a time variable. So I'm gonna go ahead and do run these. And you'll see here now it's recognizing, this is in gray, so it recognizes this is date time. And then I wanna say, okay, I wanna know if this run occurred in January or February or March. I wanna know what month it occurred in. So you say df run start date dot tt dot month to get the month. And then you say that is equal to df run month. So I'm creating a new column here. And now I wanna visualize it. So I'm gonna make a Seaborn box plot. I'm gonna say df run month is the x-axis and df run distance is the y-axis and I'm gonna say outliers are false so don't show outliers so if you do that boom there you have it uh, so let's look at this real quick so it looks like my longer runs some of my peak longer runs that are almost outliers are in August and September that makes sense my highest median run distance is in March which is just over three miles that's sad but yeah this is kind of interesting so this box plot it's a it's kind of a little plot that tells you the simple statistics of your data. So in short, the bottom whisker tells you the fifth percentile of your data. Um, actually, let's say this real quick. So a percentile is, in short, the first person, if you were doing 100 runs and run one was one mile and run 100 was 100 miles and everything in between um, was the, the number of miles you ran was the number of the run. Your... So these bottom lines, they're the fifth percentile. That means if they were in that 100 run series, it would be your five mile run. These top lines are the 95th percentile. That means that they would be your 95th mile run, 95 mile run. The middle lines in the box, those are the medians, that, so that's the 50 mile run. And uh, the bottom of the box is 25 and the top of the box is 75. So that means that my 50th percentile run here in March was uh, 3.1 miles. But anyways, assuming you know statistics pretty well, we're gonna go on to biking. So if we look at the same stuff for bike, calling it DFB, uh, you see that I have a bit of a slump in biking, it looks like, in the months leading up to winter in the fall, which is weird. I guess it starts getting cooler and I start being a baby. But it looks like, um, in the lead up to spring and in spring and summer, I have my the most biking. I don't know what's going on in February or uh, December. It might be doped by Zwift, um, but no matter. Anyways, you get some stats here. But what if I wanted to look in them next to each other? So I can add a new column. I can say df run at a label, it's run. Df bike at a label, it's bike. And then I say run bike is a list that includes df run and df bike. And then df run bike is the concatenated list. So I'm basically just combining the two data frames. And then I'll plot it the same way. Um, I'm gonna add the that data is df run bike, and I'm gonna add a hue here. A hue basically says that you need to um, for each for each um, category within that within the label, I want to have a box plot. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty much the same. So if I run that, and I forgot to run the code before it, if I run that, boom, I could move the label box, but it puts them all on the same axis. So what this tells me more than anything else is that my running is more consistent than my cycling. My cycling changes throughout the year. My running doesn't seem to, and that's probably if I were to gander because of the availability of treadmills versus uh, the amount of time I've had a trainer that I could use inside to bicycle. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you get something out of it and I hope you can uh, come to analyze your own data. If you want to see more of this, comment down below or comment on whatever I post this on. Let me know what you want to see next. I'm really happy to dig into my own data or dig into some of yours. If you want to send me your own data file, I'm happy to tell you some things about it if you're interested in that and if you're comfortable with that i'd be happy to make a video about it 
and you would remain anonymous. Uh, but if you want to see more stuff like this, please give me a thumbs up. And if you feel so inclined, I would really appreciate the subscription. It would help me a lot through motivation, really, more than anything else. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope this gives you a little bit back what the uh, lost features on Strava Free have taken away. Anyways, uh, hope you're having a great day, and uh, see you next time.